Usually, tombs and funerary chambers are excavated down in the earth, hide from the view of the man in order to protect the dead and the soul of the ancestors. On the contrary, Dolman seems not to fit with this vision, facing the grave robber's activities and natural disaster, they still stand, sometimes emptied and sucked in antiquity, but they are still standing after thousands of years, speaking to us, trying to explain to modern people their meaning silent witnesses of time transition. Dolmens of Southern Levant, first noticed by European explorers crossing the Jordan Valley at the beginning of 1800, are clustered in large groups, suggesting to the scholars the use of the term fields, a word that does not give a functional meaning to this megalithic structure. Called by Arab people houses of the jinn, the first European explorers, uh, as uh, Mayor Claude Condor, called them dolmens, for the similitude with the British and French dolmens. The first Mayor Condor interpretation about uh, dolmens of Southern Levant were wrong. He thought that they were not covered by mounds or that they were often too small to have human burials inside. He saw only emptied chambers without excavated graves underneath. So for him, Near Eastern dolmens have to consider small houses or altars. Of course, all this interpretation lacked of archaeological method and mostly on field excavation. Nevertheless, Major Condor noted also some particular topographical characteristic of the dolmen fields, evidence of the strong impact of these large megaliths on the surrounding landscape. In particular, he noted that they are located close to spring and streams, both large rivers, like the Jordan River, and seasonal streams, called in Arabic wadis. Some of the dolmen fields described by Mayor Condor, such as the Amman dolmen fields or the dolmen fields near the Nimbo mountain, are today disappeared due to the modern urban expansion. Thus, his information and drawings are very important. Generally dated to the prehistory, the following surveys and excavation to dolmen fields uh, in, uh, on the eastern side of the Jordan Valley in Jordan definitively proved that these megalithic fields were built for the first time in the second half of the 4 millennium BC, between the end of the late Chalcolithic period and the beginning of the early Bronze Age I in the Near Eastern chronology, a main historical transitional for the Southern Levant. The excavation at Damie, Tehamam, and in Wadi Yabis in the north recovered pottery also from a later period, attesting sporadic reusing of ancient dolmens till the end of the second millennium BC. The first systematic dolmen excavation discovered human bones fragments, mainly teeth and small bones, in the megalithic chamber. The lack of long bones and skulls was explained with the fact that during the abandonment of the site, people perhaps took the bones with them. In the 90s, the American team of the Madaba Plains project discovered a sealed intact early Bronze Age I dolmen in the site of Tel el -Umeri. Here, remains of dozens of secondary inhumations rearranged after the decomposition of the body against the back slab of the chamber have been recovered. These discoveries proved the use of dolmens in Jordan as tombs, apparently both for primary and secondary group burials. After the surveys and excavations carried on in the past century, general studies and researches about these topics were performed. Due to the lack in that time of data concerning early Bronze Age I settlements connected to the dolmen fields, the main hypothesis of the scholars was that the population which built them would be mostly pastoral nomadic tribes with a mobile society. This hypothesis was based on the wrong idea that early Bronze Age I was a period characterized by a return to pastoralism as the first method of subsistence, with the abandonment of the agricultural sedentary lifestyle. In 1992, Matania Zohar established a classification of the Dolmen Southern Levant architecture that is still in use by the scholars today, dividing in six types the shapes of the megalithic chamber. In 2005, Zidane Kafafi tried the first analysis of, this, of the distribution pattern of the, of the topologies, noticing that these are most often seen together in the Dolmen fields, without any particular order, but, but with the basic triliton 
type A clearly dominating everywhere. The Zohar typology classification when this was enlarged by other scholars like Tara Stamia and Herter, all these studies concerned all only architectural aspects without reaching further interpretation on the use and meaning of this kind of funerary tradition. In 2012, I started to co-direct with my Spanish colleague Juan Muñiz a new Italian-Spanish archaeological expedition to the site of Jebel al-Mutawak in Jordan, located on a mountain along the middle Wadi Zarka Valley in the middle of the Transjordan Highlands. The site, yet partially excavated by a Spanish expedition directed by the lost Juan Tres Guerres, was famous for the presence of an early Bronze Age one settlement located on the southern slope of the mountain, and a large dolmen field located all over the mountain, originally with more than 1,000 dolmens standing. The past Spanish expedition at the site surveyed around 300 double upset stone houses in the settlement. You can see an, an example of the um, house height on the left. Estimating a population of 3,000 more or less inhabitants. In the center of the settlement, a sacred area has been also discovered. They called it the Temple of the Serpent for, the some, for some ritual vessels discovered inside the main building, uh, building of the complex. This is uh, the main cella of the temple, look in the river valley, and this is one of the uh, cultic vessels with the snakes uh, applied on the shoulder of the vessels. The sacred enclosure of the sanctuary had inside a large cellar and other small rooms for production of olive oils and ritual activities. From the seed of olives discovered in the temple, we have the main C14 data of the settlement between 3300 and 3100 BC, corresponding to the last phase of the use of the structure. We decide to resume the excavation in different sections of the site, the southeastern area of the megalithic necropolis, area B, close to the southern wall of the early Bronze Age 1 village, area A, and part of the eastern sector of the settlement characterized by large, not domestic, structures visible on the surface, area C. The main purpose was to understand the chronological relationship between the village and the dolmen field. To achieve the objective, we decided to perform a large extended excavation, including more than one dolmen in the excavation area. We excavated in five years six dolmens in the best preserved part of the field. Peculiar characteristic uh, architectural feature identified are the constant presence of circular or apsidal walls around the dolmens, and moreover, the presence of a three-step stone frontal entrance, like a small dromos. You can see here two examples of small dromos in front of the entrance of the dolmens. Um, just few human bones and early Bronze Age one pottery share scattered on the slab floor of the megalithic chamber have been recovered. Actually, some of the dolmen have also suffered disturbing activities. But in 2013 campaign in Area B, we discovered some dolmens almost completely covered by depositional layers, so well preserved. Between this small group of three dolmens, in particular Dolmen 317, was discovered particularly well preserved, with an intact uh, mound around the megalithic chamber, a tumulus covering almost all the structure till the capstone. The burial chamber of Dolmen 317 has been recovered completely sealed. Inside the lay last layer, just above the floor slab, we discovered two burials, B25 and B26. B26 correspond at three old denominations, identified just by few small bones and feet, pushed against the black back slab of the chamber. But B25, the last interment in the chamber, consists in a complete single adult denomination, probably originally located inside the chamber in primary position, and then, after the decomposition of the body, rearranged with the long bones piled in front of the entrance and the skull, very well preserved on its back. We are doing some DNA analysis on the Petrus bone of the skull because it's very well preserved for a four millennium BC uh, human remains. Together with the burial, no entire vessels were discovered, apart of few early Bronze Age one shared, but two large flat scraper, one of the so-called fan typology, have been recovered. This is the two tools. 
The two tools, very well manufactured, are a couple of lithic tools used in working animal skin and wool shaving activities that have many comparisons inside the Mutawak settlement, but also in other late Calcolithic and early Bronze Age one site in southern Levant. The important characteristic of this area of the necropolis is its location, extramural but close to the southeastern corner of the settlement wall. In particular, we discovered in 2013 a street, L5, running from the dolmens of the necropolis straight to a door opened in the wall surrounding the settlement. You can see here the, the main settlement uh, uh, door. There is very narrow, but it is typical of the, of, of the site. And this is the street running directly through the dolmen field. This proved the contemporary of at least this sector of the necropolis with the early Bronze Age one village, as also the findings in the excavation suggested. After we move in area C, in the eastern sector of the village, here between the 2014-2017, a complex of two buildings, building 131 and the Secole building C, with the central courtyard L51, have been excavated. This is the large uh, courtyard. Inside the building 131, two large circular installations, occupying almost all the back of the main room of the structure, were used for production of aliments, possibly related to milk products like cheese, butter, or yogurt. This is the two large installations uh, on the back of the, of the large building that is definitely not a private house. Uh, it is... Uh, um, very interesting is the connection also of building 131 with the other, another larger structure located just few meters on the east in the same sector of the village. We call it the Great Enclosure. It is a wide open air semicircular area of around 50 meters of diameter, delimited by a huge stone wall, still preserved in some point for 1.70 meter high. The enclosure had a narrow megalithic entrance hide on the left, you can see the picture, and a single standing stone in the center. This is the megalithic entrance, this is the, the, um, the surrounding wall of the large enclosure, and in the center this is this one that is a standing stone. Initially interpreted by my Spanish colleague as a sacred area, in the 2015-2016 excavation, uh, we note the particular characteristic of the enclosure resembling some large stone enclosure in the Hauran region in northeastern Jordan, the so-called Black Desert, near the early Bronze Age one site of Jawa, that are interpreted as gathering point for herds and sheep. In particular, the great enclosure had at least two circular installations inside, perhaps silos used for storage of something, perhaps wool or meat. Moreover, Close to the enclosure, one scraper of the elongated flat typologies, as the one we see in Dolmen 317, was recovered. This is the, uh, the object recovering the great enclosure, and this is the one part of the burial gift, burial gift of uh, uh, Tomb 317. This is the small silos inside the enclosure. Uh, the people. Uh, ah, so is. Probably that um, inside the great enclosure, some also activities related to the sheep and uh, exploitation of the hares have been have been performed. Um, these flint tools have very good comparison comparison with the several scrapers discovered also in the Temple of the Serpent, mostly of the large fan <laughs> typology, but also of the elongated type. This is the two couple of tools very similar discovered also in the temple. Um, probably these tools are connected with activities related to the exploitation of herds of sheep and goats. But conversely, in the other rooms of the same uh, complex, several grinding stones and stone presses of basalt and limestone have been recovered together with many olive seeds, testifying the production of olive oil and the preparation of food from grain. So, it's probably that the people which build the wide Jebel al Mutawak dolmen field are part of the large community, probably more than 3,000 people, living in a 4 millennium BC permanent settlement located on the south slope of the same mountain, with a good control of the river valley, so both of the passage of the air and of the agricultural cultivation on the hill, made probably like the modern people do in terraces. They have thus a mixed agro-pastoral sedentarized economy, 
uh, probably started to be organized by a religious elite or clan. In this regard, it is very interesting to notice that dolmen fields in the Madaba Plain in southern Jordan are very similar. They are two sites actually under investigation by Copenhagen University, in particular Professor Kentner. At a careful look show also peculiar characteristics that seems to point to the use of this large megalithic necropolis by well-organized communities with a strong sense of membership and land ownership, such as the, a settlement center of the main temple close to the Mugairat dolmen field, or the productive center or small fortified village close to the Jedide dolmen field called the Condor Circle. This is the settlement near the dolmen field in Mugarat, this is the settlement near the dolmen field in Jedide. Very interesting is the fact that both these settlement uh, connected dolmen fields are based on circular architecture and urban planning, similar to Jebel al Mutawak in the north, suggesting a circular architecture and urban planning and a wider megalithic agropastoral culture in the second half of the fourth millennium BC. The transition from the Chalcolithic period and the Early Bronze Age I see the appearance of dolmen fields all over Transjordan Highland, connected with permanent settlement. The shift from the late Chalcolithic cave tombs, with secondary burials located inside the clay ossuaries, this is an example of late Chalcolithic typical tomb, to the large, well visible dolmen field, points to a new architectural program connected to the human communities with their territory. In these dolmens, in this view, dolmens are marks of the landscape, connected and sister to its eternal home in a general political framework of a prehistoric, prehistorical society that is evolving toward a urban model with the new community relationship. In my view, the appearance of dolmen in the southern Levant is a solution to a strong change of the relationship between human communities with the born of new concept of ownership of the land after the collapsing of the late Chalcolithic society. This fits well with the Early Bronze Age I, a formative period before the appearance of the first cities, when the new elites dominating the social relationship move moving toward a new urban society. Thank you so much.